Alrighty, folks, welcome to our college football week nine video here for the 2024 season. Ah, the year's flying by. We're at week nine already. Of course, if you're joining me for the first time here today, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks on YouTube since 2016. And if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video that I actually like the best, you may want to think about signing up for my college football tier on my premium page. I'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of the video. And with that, let's go ahead and dive right into some free content. We're going to start off with Sam Houston taking on Florida International. That'll be a 7.30 Eastern kickoff Tuesday night. Sam Houston is minus five, totals 46. Now, Sam Houston's five and two straight up, five and two against the point spread. Uh, certainly uh, much more improved from last season. You know, it was a tough spot for them, you know, moving up to uh, the big boys. And uh, anyway, uh, looking pretty good. Five and two straight up, five and two against the point spread. Uh, Florida International, losers of four out of their last five ball games. Uh, defense has been an absolute mess. Uh, they're allowing over 203 yards a game on the ground. They are not doing Pitbull Stadium very well. Of course, Sam Houston on the other side, they're rushing for 215 a game. They're in the top 15 in the country in that category. Give me Sam Houston, minus five, over 46. Next matchup, UTEP, Louisiana Tech, 8 o'clock Tuesday night. La Tech, six and a half, totals 50. Uh, Tech covered against the likes of NC State, Nickel State, and Middle Tennessee. Uh, they actually scored a bunch of points over the past couple of games. The Bulldogs scored 78 total points over the past two weeks. When it comes to defensive play, well, these guys are in the top 25 in yards allowed per play from scrimmage. We were talking about how good that defense was last week in the video. And they're facing a UTEP squad who's just 1-6 straight up on the year, 2-5 and five against the point spread. These guys are currently 114th in total yards, bottom 15 in rushing. Give me Louisiana Tech, minus 6.5, under 50. Next game, Liberty, Kennesaw State, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Liberty's minus 23 away from home. Total is 45. Now, Liberty's 5-0 straight up on this season. 10th best rushing school in the nation, in Kennesaw State, 0-6 oh and, oh and, uh, straight up on the year, 1-5 against the point spread. Kind of in the same spot uh, Sam Houston was this time last year. It's a real big jump uh, going up to the uh, to the big leagues. But once again, Kennesaw State still in search of their first win. Now, when it comes to slowing down the run, the Owls of Kennesaw State, they are 112th in the country in yards allowed per rush. This one could get ugly. Give me Liberty, minus 23 over 45. Next game, Middle Tennessee, Jacksonville State, 7.30 Wednesday night. Jayville State's 21, total 63 and a half. Jayville State, three-game winning streak, perfect against the point spread during that short span. And uh, this offense has been absolutely explosive over the past month. Uh, the Gamecocks have averaged 49 points a game in their last four outings. And they're facing a 2-5 and five Middle Tennessee State team who is, uh, well, 2-5 and five against the point spread as well. And uh, the Blue Raiders do have the worst secondary in the nation, uh, in my humble opinion, of course. Uh, they are dead last in the country in defensive passing. Give me Middle Tennessee plus 21 over 63 and a half. Uh, did I say Middle Tennessee? I meant Jacksonville State. Give me Jacksonville State. Uh, minus 21 over 63 and a half. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, next matchup. A little faux pas there. Uh, Georgia Southern taking on Old Dominion. And just give me a sec, guys. Make sure I got my ducks in a row here. Okay. 
All right, next matchup. Sorry about that delay. Georgia Southern taking on Old Dominion, 7 o'clock Thursday night. Old Dominion is minus one, totals 54. Now, uh, Old Dominion got the W in three out of their last four ball games. Covered the number in all of those contests except for one. And they're taking on a Georgia Southern team who's, you know, uh, had a hard time moving the football. They're 104th in yards per play, bottom 15 in yards per completion. When it comes to the total, oddly enough, uh, Georgia Southern saw overs against the likes of Georgia State and South Carolina State. Meanwhile, Old Dominion saw three out of their last five get over the line themselves. Give me Old Dominion minus one over 54. Next matchup should be a good one. Syracuse Pitt, 730 Thursday night. Pitts minus five, total 62. The Pitts six and zero oh straight up, five and one against the point spread. And this Pitt offense is 11th in the country in yards per game. They're actually averaging 41 points per contest. And I'll tell you, this Syracuse defense could be in trouble. They're 103rd in yards allowed per play. Got to travel down to Pittsburgh. Now, total wise, oddly enough, four out of Syracuse's last. Five ball games did stay under the total. Meanwhile, Pitt saw unders recently in their last two straight. Uh, those were unders against the likes of Cal and North Carolina. Give me Pitt, minus five, under 62. Next game, some more ACC action. Louisville taking on Boston College. 7.30 Eastern kickoff Friday night. Louisville's minus six and a half, totals 53 and a hook. And even though the Cards have struggled over the past few weeks, it ain't for a lack of offensive production. These guys are throwing for nearly 300 yards a game. They're in the top 25 in yards per rush. And they're taking on a Boston College team who failed to cover in their last four straight themselves. Uh, actually, 66 total points they gave up in their last two games. Give me Louisville minus six and a half over 53 and a hook. All right, next game, Boise, UNLV, 10.30 Friday night. Boise's two and a half, total 66. Now the Broncos are five and one, uh, uh, what are they, six and one straight up, five and two against the point spread. And no real surprise here, Ashton Genty uh, and the boys, they lead the nation in yards per rush. And you're, they're uh, facing a UNLV squad who failed to cover in two out of their last three. And, uh, you know, they looked terrible defensively during that stretch. Uh, 34 points a game on average they allowed during that time frame. Uh, tough to fade Boise in this spot here. It seems like a lot of folks are talking about this team. Give me Boise minus two and a half over 66. Next game, Big Ten, Rutgers, USC, 11 o'clock Friday night. USC's minus 14, totals 56. Now, the Trojans have successfully covered against the likes of Penn State, Wisconsin, and Utah State. And when it comes to moving the football, these guys have done a solid job airing it out. They're currently a top 25 passing team. And they're facing a Rutgers defense who actually has a tough time slowing down the run game. They're allowing over a buck 70 a game on the ground, 118th in yards allowed per rush. Also, for some reason, with the addition of the new teams in the Big Ten, the time zone changes have been really messing up the traveling teams of these Big Ten schools. Give me USC minus 14 over 56. All right, next game. Going into the Saturday slate, some ACC action. North Carolina taking on Virginia, 12 o'clock Saturday. Virginia is minus six, totals 59 and a half. Now, the Cavaliers did lose their last two straight. 72 total points they gave up during that stretch. Their secondary is currently 113th in defensive passing. They're facing a UNC squad who's in the top 40 in scoring, top 35 in rushing. Give me North Carolina plus six over 59 and a half. All right, next game could potentially be a good one. I'm talking about Notre Dame taking on Navy, and that's going to be a 12 o'clock Eastern start time. For some reason, uh, not listed on the big screen behind me, but uh, that game should be on NBC, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, Notre Dame, minus 12, total 52. Pretty big number there. <laughs> the Irish failed to cover this year against the likes 
of Miami, Ohio, and Northern Illinois. Of course, that Northern Illinois game was an outright loss. And, you know, the Fighting Irish really have been like little threat throwing the football. They're 105th in passing yards, bottom 10 in yards per completion, and they're facing an undefeated Navy squad who covered the number in all of those victories except for one. They're also limiting their uh, opposing quarterbacks to just 56% passing. Of course, it ain't just defense when it comes to the midshipmen. Uh, these guys are fourth in the country in rushing yards, fourth in points per game. Give me Navy plus 12 over 52. Next matchup, Tulane, Northern Texas. 12 o'clock east, actually, it's just North Texas, not Northern Texas. It's just North Texas. But anyway, Tulane at North Texas, 12 o'clock east. Tulane's minus seven away from home, total 65 and a half. Now, Tulane is five and two straight up, five and two against the point spread. And I'm not going to take anything away from North Texas. Uh, they're doing some things pretty well. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Tulane, uh, they're, coming, uh, they're coming to town here. And I'll tell you, aside from averaging 40 points a game, you know, Tulane's also been very efficient throwing the football. They're in the top 10 in the country in yards per completion. And unfortunately for North Texas, uh, they're allowed, uh, they're actually, they rank 114th in yards allowed per completion themselves. Uh, their secondary has really had a tough time. Uh, they're allowing 285 yards a game. Uh, through the air. I think Tulane should have a good one in this one. Uh, give me Tulane minus seven over 65 and a half. All right, next matchup, little uh, matching here. Buffalo, Ohio, 12 o'clock east. Ohio, six and a half, totals 45. Now, uh, the Bobcats did win four out of their last six games. Seventh in the country right now in first quarter points allowed, doing a great job right out of the gate. Uh, they're actually allowing just 1.7 points in the first quarter on average. Uh, they also have a top 35 rushing defense, so doing a lot of things well. And they're facing a Buffalo team on the other side who actually lost two out of their last three, and they definitely struggle moving the football. They rank 119th in yards per play, bottom 10 in passing. Give me Ohio minus six and a half, under 45. All right, next game should be a good one. I tell you, if you looked at this game, you know, on the preseason schedule, you'd probably not think much of it, but uh, this should be a, a bit of a slobber knocker. Uh, Washington taking on Indiana, 12 o'clock Eastern kickoff. Indy is minus six, totals 53. And uh, the undefeated Hoosiers are six and one against the point spread. They've been cash cows with regard to the number. And I'll tell you, they play some incredibly tough defense. Good to see uh, Sig Signetti and what he's done with Indiana. Uh, he took a handful of players with him from JMU. And I'll tell you, man, <laughs> this guy's getting the job done. He is, uh, we turned around a, a program who was looking bleak there for a while. But anyway, Indy is fifth in the country in rushing defense, uh, fourth in yards allowed per completion. So they're doing it well. In the run game, in the passing game, they're getting pretty much everything done on defense. And they're facing a Washington team who failed to cover in four out of their last six. Uh, they've got a handful of problems on offense. Uh, they're 115th in first quarter st uh, scoring. They start off slow uh, on offense. They're 96th in the country in points per game. And I'll tell you what, a lot of drive stoppers. And what I mean by that is they are a heavily penalized bunch. The Huskies are 110th in the country in offensive penalty yards. That will kill a drive every time. Give me Indy minus six under 53. All right, next matchup, some more uh, Big Ten action. And, you know, you got some experts out there that are thinking this is going to be a pretty good game. But anyway, we're talking about Nebraska at Ohio State, 12 o'clock east. Ohio State's minus 25, totals 48. Bit of a big number in this spot here, although Ohio State's 5-1 and one straight up, uh, third in total yards allowed. Meanwhile, Nebraska, 91st in yards per play, 99th in yards per completion. I think the Cornhuskers are going to have a tough time moving that football on the road. I don't think Ohio State's going to be taking them lightly, and it's going to be loud. Give me Ohio State, minus 25, under 48. 
All right, next game, Oklahoma taking on Ole Miss, 12 o'clock east. Could be a massacre here. Ole Miss minus 20 and a half, total 48 and a hook. Ole Miss is 5-2 and two straight up, 5-2 and two against the point spread. And the uh, Re Rebels currently have the best rushing defense in college football. Uh, just 66 yards a game they allow on the ground. And they're facing a terrible Oklahoma offense who's in the bottom 10 in total yards, 100th in rushing yards. Like I said, this one could get ugly. I don't expect Oklahoma to light up that scoreboard. Give me Ole Miss minus 20 and a half. Under 48 and a hook. All right, next game, little ACC action. Georgia Tech taking on Virginia Tech, uh, 12 o'clock Eastern kickoff. Virginia Tech's minus nine, totals 52. Now, the Hokies did cover in their last three straight, four and one against the number in their last five. And I'll tell you, this Hokie defense has, uh, you know, done a nice job making life hell for, you know, opposing quarterbacks. Uh, they're fourth in the nation in sacks, 13th in completions allowed. And they're facing a Georgia Tech team who failed to cover in three out of their last four themselves. Uh, their defense has given up 31 points or more uh, three times during that four-game stretch I just mentioned. When it comes to the number, well, the, gel, uh, the Yellow Jackets did see three. Out of those four games I just mentioned, uh, stay under the posted total. Uh, they're 6-2 and two to the under for the entire season. Give me Virginia Tech, minus 9, under 52. All right, next game, Charlotte-Memphis, 12 o'clock east. Memphis is minus 18, totals 57. And I don't know if you realize this, but the Memphis Tigers are 6-1 and one straight up on the year. Their only loss was to undefeated Navy, and they still put up 44 points in that loss. This is a team who's explosive. You know, when it comes to offensive production, uh, Memphis is averaging 5.2 yards per rush. They're a top 30 passing team. They can do it both. And they're facing a 3-4 and four Charlotte team who struggles in the secondary themselves. Uh, these guys are actually 129th in yards allowed per completion, giving up big chunk plays. Uh, they're in the bottom 15 in defensive points per game. I think Memphis should be able to cover this number at home. Give me the Tigers, minus 18, over 57. All right, next contest. Little SEC action. Arkansas taking on Mississippi State, 1245 East. Arkansas is minus 6.5 away from home. Totals 58. Uh, Arkansas is 4-3 and three straight up, 5-2 and two against the point spread. Covers over the likes of Tech... Uh, Covers over the likes of Tennessee, uh, Texas A&M, and Auburn this year. Uh, they're actually in the top 25 in total yards per game. And they're facing a 1-6 and six Mississippi State team who is actually dead last in the country in sacks, doing a terrible job getting pressure. Of course, they're last in defensive completion percentage as well, just because they're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. Plenty of time back there. Give me Arkansas, minus 6.5, over 58. All right, next game, not on our big screen behind me, but it's going to be that uh, Georgia State-Appalachian State game, 1 o'clock East. Appy State's minus 7.5 at home, total 63. Now, Appy State covered against the likes of Louisiana and East Carolina recently. They are in the top 20 in the country in passing yards, and they're facing a 2-4 and four Georgia State team who actually lost their last three straight. They failed to cover in all of their games this year except for one. Now, when it comes to defensive play, uh, ECU's 109th in total yards allowed. Uh, they could have some problems here Saturday. In the Appalachian State, minus 7.5, over 63. Next matchup, Temple, ECU, 2 o'clock East. East Carolina is minus 7, totals 49. ECU is 4-3 and three against the point spread this year. Top 35 in passing yards. Meanwhile, Temple's just two and five straight up on the season. Uh, 32 points a game they allow on defense. It's a team who really is not well rounded and, uh, you know, at times comes out flat. Uh, give me East Carolina minus seven over 49. All right, next matchup, some more matching here. Central Michigan taking on Miami, Ohio, two o'clock East. Miami's minus 12, totals 47. The Red Hawks are 3-4 and four straight up, 3-4 and four against the point spread. 
And when it comes to defensive play, they are 101st uh, in sacks, you know, not getting a whole lot of pressure. And uh, they're allowing, because of that, they're allowing 20 completed balls a game. And they're facing a Central Michigan team on the other side who averages 30 points a game themselves. And they rank in the top 25 in yards per rush. This offensive unit could give them problems. Give me Central Michigan plus 12 over 47. All right, next contest uh, should be on our big screen. And for some reason, it's not. But this could be an interesting game. I'm talking about Missouri taking on Alabama. That's going to be a 330 Eastern kickoff. Alabama is minus 14, totals 56. Now, the Tides failed to cover in their last three straight. And actually, their defense allowed 31 points a game in their last four games. And they're facing a Missouri team who's 30th in completions, incredibly accurate throwing the football. Uh, they've actually thrown just one interception all season long. When it comes to the total, the Tigers are currently 5-2 and two to the under for the entire season. Of course, Bama on the other side, they saw unders recently against Tennessee and South Florida. Give me Missouri, plus 14, under 56. Next game, Wake Forest, Stanford, 3.30 p.m. East. Wake Forest is two and a half, totals 54. The Deeks got the W and two out of their last three. Uh, they covered this year against the likes of UConn, NC State, and Virginia, they're facing a struggling Stanford team who's on a four-game skid themselves. They give up 40 points a game on average during that stretch. Give me Wake Forest minus two and a half over 54. All right, next game, uh, Big Ten. Northwestern, Iowa, 330 East. Iowa's minus 14 at home, totals 38. Now, Iowa failed to cover in four out of their last six. They're still pretty bad on offense. These guys throw for just a buck 36 a game. They're in the bottom five in yards per completion. And they're facing a Northwestern defense who allows only 19 points a game. And they rarely commit penalties. They're very disciplined. Uh, they're the second least penalized defense in college football. And when it comes to stopping the run, well, Northwestern's got a top 25 rushing defense. Give me Northwestern plus 14, keeping that one close, under 38. All right, next matchup, Texas Tech taking on TCU. Uh, that's another one that should be on the big screen, but it is not. That is a 3.30 Eastern start. TCU is minus 5.5, total 67. Now, the Horned Frogs, winners of two out of their last three, uh, Utah and Kansas they beat during that short span. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, uh, these guys can throw the football. The Wildcats are averaging over 331 yards a game through the air. They're sixth in completions. They're facing a terrible uh, Red Raider secondary who allows more yards a game through the air than any other school besides one. Give me TCU minus five and a half over 57. All right, next ball game, Kent State taking on Western Michigan. And uh, that's going to be a 330 Eastern start. Western Michigan's minus 16 and a half, totals 59 and a hook. Now, Western Michigan's four and three straight up. Kent State, 0 and 7 on the other side, uh, still in search of their first win. Uh, Kent State, they allow 46 points a game on average. That is worst in Division I. And no real surprise, they're allowing 537 total yards a game. That is also worst in college football. And they're facing a Western Michigan program who does rank in the top 25 in quarterback rating. Uh, they're also in the top 20 in the nation in completion percentage on offense as well. Give me Western Michigan minus 16 and a half over 59 on a hook. All right, next game, Southern Miss, JMU, 3.30 p.m. East. James Madison is minus 23 and a half, totals 55. The Dukes are five and two straight up. Tough to throw the football against. The secondary is eighth in the country in defensive quarterback rating. Uh, and they're facing a one and six Southern Miss team who failed to cover in all their ball games this year except for two. When it comes to offensive production, these guys are 123rd in total yards per game. Of course, uh, 134 total teams in Division I. Give me James Madison, minus 23 and a half, under 55. 
Next ball game, Eastern Michigan taking on Akron, 3.30 p.m. East. Eastern Michigan's minus two and a half away from home. Totals 52. Eastern Michigan, five and two straight up. Nearly perfect against the point spread. They're uh, actually six and one against the number this year. Meanwhile, Akron, uh, quite the opposite. Uh, they're just one and six straight up. Two and five against the number. The Zips are currently on a four-game skid, and they actually average just 15 points a game during that time frame. When it comes to running the football, these guys gain only 68 yards a game on the ground. They're in the bottom five in the country in that particular category. And they're facing an Eastern Michigan defense who can uh, definitely be opportunistic at times. Uh, they're in the top 25 in sacks, 11th in fumbles. Of course, as a team, once again, these guys successfully covered the point spread in all of their contests except for one. Give me Eastern Michigan minus two and a half, under 52. All right, next matchup, Wagner, UMass, 3.30 p.m. East. Uh, this game is currently off the board. Uh, UMass does have covers this year against the likes of Northern Illinois, Miami, Ohio, and Toledo. Uh, not really sure what this number is going to be. Really no clue what the total will be either. Uh, so just to give you a play on the game, uh, give me UMass money line. I don't know. It's probably going to be expensive, but uh, I like UMass to win it. All right, next game, Texas San Antonio taking on Tulsa, 3.30 p.m. East. Utz is minus 7.5, totals 54. Now the uh, Texas San Antonio Roadrunners, they are 30th in the country in passing yards, 14th in completions. And they're facing a Tulsa secondary who stinks. They're in the bottom three in the country in yards allowed per pass attempt. Uh, give me Texas San Antonio minus seven and a half over 54. Next matchup, Oklahoma State, Baylor, 3.30 p.m. East. Baylor's minus five, total 64 and a half. Baylor, four and three against the point spread. Uh, covers against Texas Tech, Air Force, and Utah. And this Baylor offense is averaging over 30 point, uh, 32 points a game. Uh, so they're doing a nice job getting on the scoreboard. And they're taking on a shaky Oklahoma State defense who uh, continues to let this program down. They're in the bottom five in rushing defense, uh, bottom 10 in yards allowed per completion. Give me Baylor minus five over 64 and a half. Next game, BYU taking on Central Florida. That'll be a 3.30 Eastern kickoff. BYU's minus one and a half, totals 56. BYU's 7-0 straight up, 6-1 against the point spread. And this Cougar secondary has uh, definitely made it tough on opposing quarterbacks. They're fourth in defensive quarterback rating, fifth in completion percentage. And they're facing a UCF offensive unit who uh, really doesn't throw it all too well. They're in the bottom 10 in completions, 110th in passing yards, Give me BYU minus one and a half, under 56. Next game, Rice, UConn, 3.30 p.m. East. UConn's minus seven, totals 47. Now the Huskies did fail to cover in their last two straight. They're completing only 56% of their throws. And they're facing a Rice secondary who allows just a buck 69 a game through the air. They're in the top 25 in yards per play. Give me Rice plus seven under 47. Next game, Northern Illinois, Ball State, 3.30 p.m. East, and I use minus 11 and a half, totals 49. Northern Illinois, four and three straight up, five and two against the point spread. Big time covers over NC State and Notre Dame. And I'll tell you, these guys, uh, they make it tough to move the sticks against. They're 17th in sacks, 10th in fewest penalties. No real surprise here. The Huskies allow only 16 points a game, third in total yards allowed. And unfortunately for Ball State, they've had all kinds of problems getting downfield. They're in the bottom three in yards per completion, just two or five straight up for the year. Give me Northern Illinois, minus 11 and a half, under 49. Next matchup, Illinois taking on Oregon, 3.30 p.m. East. Oregon's minus 21, totals 55. The Ducks are 7-0 straight up, 15th in points allowed. And they're facing a struggling Illinois O-line who's actually 117th in sacks allowed. Give me Oregon, minus 21, under 55. 
Next matchup, some more Big Ten action. Maryland, Minnesota, 3.30 p.m. East. Minnesota's minus 3.5, totals 45 and a hook. The Minnesota's 6-1 and one against the point spread this year. They've been a cash cow. Uh, covers against the likes of USC, Michigan, and UCLA. And as good as they've been on defense, uh, they've actually, uh, you know, been pretty efficient throwing the football on offense. They're 18th in completion percentage, top 35 in fourth quarter scoring, so that back door is always open. They're facing a Maryland squad who failed to cover in three out of their last four themselves. They're 120th in defensive passing. Give me Minnesota minus three and a half, over 45 and a hook. All right, next game going back into the max. Still in that 3.30 slate. Bowling Green taking on Toledo. 3.30 Eastern start. Toledo's minus three and a half. Totals 48. Of course, uh, Toledo having a tough time running the football this year. Uh, they're gaining only 3.2 yards per rush. 111th in yards per game on the ground. They're facing a Bowling Green team who covered this year against the likes of A&M and Penn State. When it comes to defensive play, they're in the top 25 in sacks, doing a great job getting pressure. Uh, sixth in completions allowed. Give me Bowling Green plus three and a half, under 48. Next matchup, Oregon State, Cal, four o'clock east. Cal's minus 10 and a half, totals 49. And you know, for a team laying double digits in this spot here, Cal's on a four-game losing streak. They actually rank 103rd in completions allowed. And they're facing a 4-3 and three Oregon State team who averages over 30 points a game themselves. And I'll tell you, they like to run it on you. They're gaining 239 yards a game on the ground. Give me Oregon State plus 10.5, over 49. Next matchup, Texas. Vanderbilt, 415 East. Texas is minus 18, totals 54. The uh, Longhorns are now 6-1 straight up, 5-2 against the point spread. Of course, uh, coming off a, a tough loss last week. I uh, think this will actually be a pretty good bounce back, back spot. I think a lot of folks will probably overreact to the loss. Plus, they'll also overreact to, you know, Vandy beating Bama over the past, what was that, a couple weeks ago. So I think we'll see some overreaction, probably get a better number in this one uh, by kickoff. But once again, uh, despite last week's loss, we are still looking at the number one defense in college football. Uh, the Longhorns are first in yards allowed, first in points per game on D. And they are facing a Vandy offense who actually completes only 14 throws a game on average. They're 94th in passing yards. Uh, like I said, a little bounce back spot. Might you know be a little bit rusty early, but I think Texas should be able to pull away. Give me the Longhorns minus 18, under 54. All right, next matchup, UL Monroe taking on South Alabama, 5 o'clock east. South Alabama's minus 8.5. Total is 45 and a hook. Uh, the Jags are 3-4 and four straight up, 3-4 and four against the point spread. Meanwhile, UL Monroe on the other side, the underdogs, they are 5-1 and one straight up, 5-1 and one against the point spread. And uh, this UL Monroe offensive line, they've been pretty excellent protecting the quarterback. Actually, in the top 10 in the country in fewest sacks, top 10 in fewest fumbles, doing a lot of things right on offense. And they're facing a South Alabama team who lost two out of their last three themselves, having a tough time slowing down the pass. Uh, the Jags are giving up over 285 yards a game through the air. Uh, I like Monroe catching the points here. Give me UL Monroe plus eight and a half over 45 and a hook. Next game, New Mexico taking on Colorado State, 5 o'clock Eastern kickoff. Colorado State is minus 6, total 65. All right, the uh, Colorado State Rams, they are certainly having a tough time slowing down the passing game. They're in the bottom five in completions allowed, bottom three in sacks, and they're facing a solid New Mexico offensive line who's fourth in the country in sacks allowed, doing a great job protecting that quarterback. Of course, when it comes to the ground game, Mexico's gaining 5.9 yards per play on the ground. That puts them seventh in the country in that particular category. Give me New Mexico, plus six, over 65. All right, next game, Florida State taking on the Miami Hurricanes. That'll be a 7 o'clock Eastern start. Miami is minus 21, totals 55. 
And the Canes are undefeated on this season, 4-3 and three against the point spread. And I'll tell you what, their defense has definitely been tough to run against. They're allowing only 92 yards a game on the ground, 21st in total yards per game. And uh, this Florida State offense has been anemic at best. Uh, they're in the bottom three in total yards, second worst in yards per rush. Give me the Hurricanes, minus 21, under 55. Next game, West Virginia, Arizona, 7 o'clock east. Arizona's minus 3.5, totals 54 and a hook. Uh, the Wildcats are on a three-game skid, failed to cover in all of their ball games this year except for one. And this Arizona defense has allowed over 34 points a game on average uh, in their last three outings. Uh, and they're facing a West Virginia squad on the other side who does like running the football, and they do it well. Uh, the Mountaineers are averaging over 203 yards a game on the ground. Uh, they are a top 25 rushing team. Give me West Virginia plus three and a half over 54 and a hook. All right, next game, Utah State taking on Wyoming, seven o'clock east. Wyoming's minus three, totals 57. Wyoming's one and six straight up, two and five against the point spread. Their defense allows nearly 31 points a game. They're 119th in yards allowed per play. They're facing a Utah State team who definitely likes to air it out. Uh, these guys have the 11th best aerial attack in the game. They're throwing for 311 yards per contest. Give me Utah State plus three over 57. Next matchup, Utah-Houston, 7 o'clock east. Utah's minus three, totals two, uh, total is 37. Utah's four and three straight up, 12th in points allowed. And uh, this Utah defense is also ninth in the country in defensive quarterback rating. It is definitely an elite defense. <clears throat> and that's certainly bad news for Houston on the other side, who's actually 106th in quarterback rating on offense, uh, bottom 15 in the country in total yards. I think Utah should get the job done. I'm not expecting a whole lot of points, though. Give me Utah minus three under 37. Next game, Troy, Arkansas State, 7 o'clock east. Arkansas State's minus six, totals 51 and a half. Arkansas State won two out of their last three. Uh, 22 throws a game they're completing on average. And they're facing a Troy secondary who's allowing their opponents to complete nearly 72% of their throws against them. Uh, they're actually second worst in Division I in completion percentage. Um, I think Arkansas State should be able to have a day on offense. Give me Arkansas State, minus six, over 51 and a half. All right, next game should be a good one. LSU, Texas A&M, 730 East. Uh, Texas A&M, they are minus three, totals 53 and a half. Now, A&M's just two and five against the point spread, uh, having a tough time throwing the football. Uh, they're completing only 58% of their throws, just a buck 86 a game through the air. They're facing a 6-1 LSU squad who uh, loves pounding on the quarterback. Uh, this Tiger D is 8th in the country in sacks. And uh, when it comes to offensive production, these guys uh, have averaged over 322 yards a game through the air. Um, now, total-wise, the Tigers uh, did see their last four straight games all stay under the number. Meanwhile, A&M saw unders against the likes of Arkansas and Bowling Green. Give me LSU plus three, under 53 and a half. All right, next game, Michigan State taking on Michigan, 730 Eastern start. Michigan's minus six, totals 41. And uh, the Michigan Wolverines, I'll tell you, uh, this program is not the same. They did not bounce back well. Uh, losers of their last two straight. They failed to cover the point spread in all of their contests this year, except for one. When it comes to offensive production, the Wolverines are throwing for just a buck twenty-eight a game. That is absolutely pathetic. It's dead last. Uh, they're dead last in the country in yards per completion, and they're facing a tough uh, four and three Michigan State team who actually covered the point spread in three out of their last four games. And I'll tell you what, uh, this Sparty defense, they're allowing only 20 points per contest. They're in the top 30 in total yards allowed. This is going to be a tough matchup for the Wolverines. I think Michigan State should keep this one close. Might end up winning it outright. 
Give me Sparty plus six under 41. Next game, Penn State, Wisconsin, 7.30 p.m. East. Penn State's minus six and a half, totals 48. And the Nittany Lions are 6-0 straight up, and they allow only 14 points a game on defense. And they're facing a, uh, you know, Wisconsin team on the other side who's kind of been sloppy with the football on offense. You guys are 128th in the country in fumbles per game on offense. Penn State's pretty opportunistic. I think, uh, I think a big turnover late is going to seal the deal for them. Give me Penn State, minus 6.5, under 48. Next matchup, SEC, Auburn, Kentucky, 745 East. Kentucky's minus three, totals 43. The Wildcats are just three and four straight up on this season. Losers of their last two straight. When it comes to offensive production, these guys definitely struggle moving the chains. They're 124th in quarterback rating on offense. And they're facing a physical Auburn defense who does limit their opponents to just 56% passing. When it comes to slowing down the run, the Tigers are 22nd in the, in the uh, nation in yards per play on the ground. Give me Auburn plus three under 43. <clears throat> All right, next matchup. Kansas taking on K-State, 8 o'clock east. K-State's minus 10, totals 55 and a half. Now the uh, Wildcats are just three and four against the point spread this season. Uh, tough time slowing down the pass. The secondary is 109th in passing defense, and uh, they're facing a, a pretty good Kansas O-line who's 20th in the country and fewest sacks allowed. Uh, the Jayhawks are doing a nice job moving bodies as well. Talking about that big O-line, uh, the Jayhawks are gaining nearly 5.9 yards per rush on the ground. Rivalry game, I think they can keep it close. Give me Kansas plus 10 over 55 and a half. All right, next matchup, SMU taking on Duke, 8 o'clock east. Uh, SMU is minus 10 and a half, totals 49. Now, Southern Methodists, they are 6-1 straight up, 5-2 and two against the point spread. And as much uh, attention as the Mustang, Mustangs get on offense, well, the, uh, the Ponies are playing some tough defense as well. Not a lot of people talk about their D. But uh, SMU, they are 6th in the country in interceptions, 7th in rushing defense. They're facing a Duke offense who actually uh, struggles a bit despite their record. These guys are 112th in yards per game. Give me SMU minus 10 and a half, under 49. All right, next game, San Jose State taking on Fresno State, 8 o'clock Eastern kickoff. Fresno State's minus 5 and a half, totals 55. Now, Fresno failed to cover in their last three straight. Uh, offense has definitely sputtered a bit. They were held to just 18 points a game during that three-game span I just mentioned. When it comes to turning it over, the Bulldogs are 129th in interceptions per game. And they're facing a ferocious San Jose State defense who's 6th in the country in picks, 13th in fumbles. And uh, no real surprise here, folks. The Spartans are in the top 25 in the nation in defensive quarterback rating. Give me San Jose State plus 5.5. Under 55. Next matchup, Cincinnati taking on Colorado, 10-15 East. Colorado is minus five, totals 57 and a half. And uh, as good as the Buffaloes have looked, uh, they continue to be one-dimensional on offense. Uh, they're running for just 74 yards a game on the ground. Uh, bottom five in yards per rush. When it comes to protecting the quarterback, Shadur Sanders uh, has more sack yards a game than any other team besides one. And they're facing a tough Cincy defense who allows only 19 points a game themselves. They're in the top 40 in sacks. And when it comes to offensive production, uh, Bearcats are a top 25 passing team. Now, since he saw overs against the likes of Texas Tech and Towson, while Colorado saw three out of their last four get over the total themselves, give me Cincy plus five. Over 57 and a half. Next game, Washington State taking on San Diego State, 10, uh, 10.30 p.m. East. Wazoo's minus 13 and a half. Uh, total is 55 and a hook. And uh, folks, I don't know if you realize this. Uh, Washington State, they are 6-1 and one on the season. 5-2 and two against the point spread. 
They've beaten the likes of Washington and Texas Tech. They're also averaging just about 40 points a game. And, uh, you know, that's bad news for San Diego State, who struggles on offense. Uh, they average just 17 points a game in their last five outings. They're 113th in total yards. When it comes to the number, San Diego State saw their last two games get over the posted total. The Washington State saw overs against the likes of Boise and San Jose State. Give me Wazoo, minus 13 and a half, over 55 and a hook. And uh, with that, folks, uh, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It's going to be Nevada taking on Hawaii, and that uh, is going to be uh, a midnight start uh, on the East Coast. Uh, what is that? Nine o'clock on the West Coast. Uh, Nevada's minus three, totals 47. Uh, Nevada just three and five straight up, 114th of passing yards. While uh, Hawaii on the other side, they've got a pretty good secondary themselves. They're 35th in the country in defensive passing. Give me Hawaii plus three, under 47. And with that, folks, now it's time for our quick pick recap. I like Sam Houston, minus five, over 46. Louisiana Tech, minus six and a half, under 50. And if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video that I actually like the best, you may want to think about signing up for my college football package on my premium page. I like Liberty, minus 23, over 45. Jacksonville State, minus 21, over 63 and a hook. Old Dominion, minus one, over 54. Pitt Panthers, minus five, under 62. Louisville, minus six and a half, over 53 and a hook. Boise, minus two and a half, over 66. USC Trojans, minus 14, over 56. North Carolina, plus six, over 59 and a half. Navy plus 12, over 52. Tulane minus 7, over 65 and a half. Ohio Bobcats minus 6 and a half, under 45. Indiana Hoosiers minus 6, under 53. Ohio State minus 25, under 48. Ole Miss minus 20 and a half, under 48 and a hook. Virginia Tech minus 9, under 52. Memphis minus 18, over 57. Arkansas, minus 6.5, over 58. Appalachian State, minus 7.5, over 63. East Carolina, minus 7, over 49. Central Michigan, plus 12, over 47. Missouri, plus 14, under 56. Wake Forest, minus 2.5, over 54. Northwestern, plus 14, under 38. TCU, minus 5.5, over 67. Western Michigan, minus 16.5, over over 59 and a hook. James Madison minus 23 and a half, under 55. Eastern Michigan minus two and a half, under 52. Give me UMass money line. Texas San Antonio minus seven and a half, over 54. Baylor minus five, over 64 and a half. BYU minus one and a half, under 56. Rice plus seven, under 47. Northern Illinois minus 11 and a half, under 49. Uh, Oregon Ducks minus 21 under 55. Minnesota Golden Gophers minus three and a half over 45 and a hook. Bowling Green plus three and a half under 48. Oregon State plus 10 and a half over 49. Texas Longhorns minus 18 under 54. UL Monroe plus eight and a half over 45 and a hook. New Mexico plus six over 65. Miami Hurricanes minus 21 under 55. West Virginia plus three and a half over 54 and a hook. Utah State plus three over 57. Utah running Utes minus three under 37. Arkansas State minus six over 51 and a half. LSU plus three under 53 and a hook. Michigan State plus six under 41. Penn State minus six and a half under 48. Auburn Tigers plus three under 43. Kansas Jayhawks plus 10 over 55 and a half. SMU minus 10 and a half under 49. San Jose State plus five and a half under 55. Cincinnati plus five over 57 and a half. Washington State minus 13 and a half over 55 and a hook. Give me Hawaii plus three under 47. And with that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium site. And if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash brogpage, uh, 
Just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships during that time frame absolutely free. They're going to be included with your membership. But most importantly, folks, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy week nine to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium page.